We're talking about primarily Puerto Ricans at that time. Um, the late 60s and the 70s, the, the, the predominant Latin culture in New York was Puerto Rican. And so we had the, the salsa music, and we had it, salsa music as is hip hop today was a culture. It was, it was a, you know, it was summers in the street and concerts on the steps of the churches and the people with the food, and the, you know, it was a way of life, you know. Uh, and it was something that people identified with. And there, there was a moment there where, in the 60s, where uh, before salsa, the word salsa happened and things got, that got popular, um, when Boogaloo had that brief stint, you know, where, where the same thing that happened to me was happening in terms of um, displaced Latinos here, uh, again, predominantly Puerto Rican, were born here listening to soul music and doo and, you know, Temptations and uh, Diana Ross and all that stuff. They, um, they wanted a music that reflected them, and again, the Latin stuff, the, the hardcore Latin stuff, that the, the, the very traditional guys, um, was playing wasn't really them. It didn't tell their story, and so Kogalu kind of told their story, them being born here but still being of Latin, Latin roots and mixing all those things. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, then the salsa thing kind of hit and Boogaloo kind of like, they, they kind of pounded Boogaloo out of, you know, nobody really wanted it. The, the, in terms of the, the, the powers that be, they didn't want Boogaloo was kind of like, you know, was messing things up and so they, they wanted to squash it, you know. And uh, once they did and salsa took off, um, you know, we had, that the idea of, um, mm -hmm. of living it, you know, it wasn't just the music, it was telling our story, it was giving uh, Latin some, you know, some semblance of strength and that we belonged here and that we were here and, and people had to recognize that we were here. Um, so, it, that, that followed into the 80s, I think, and you know, as I, I had friends that were Colombian and Dominican and Chinese and Russian. And my neighborhood is very Russian now, but it was just starting to become Russian at that time. And um, there was so much diversity around me at all times that I thought that that's what the world was like, you know. I knew that when I went to family's house, I had to speak Spanish, which was very difficult for me um, at the time, because I would answer my mother in you know, short answers, but in terms of stringing conversation together back and forth and not using any English words, that was like, well, I had to learn to do that. So I was always a little nervous about speaking Spanish with the family. Um, but, um, you know, I, I just thought the whole, whole world was like that. There was Chinese people and everything was so mixed, you know, in terms of my uh, experience growing up. You know, my, I, best friend that was Korean at one point, the best friend that was half black, half Puerto Rican down the hall from me. It was um, such a mix, you know? And now it's completely Russian there, and it's just me. I'm, I think I'm the only, me and my mother, my mother's still there. But, um, but yeah, you know, I, from what I saw, the little glimpses that I got, it was very relatable. It was all the same, you know, they ate their music and they, you know, the, the people that were, you know, that had the energy went out in the evenings and went to Latin clubs and did those things. And I had no idea of that until I came back from the military and started to explore that for myself. Um, but they were all married young and, and had 
a bunch of kids, and so everything was very family, family, family. Mm -hmm. um, as far as my recollection. I, I think it's funny because, um, because you, you know, it's hard to talk about uh, Latin anything without talking about slavery in some, some sense because of the fact that a lot of the culture that we have now is because of a mix of cultures. You know, in, in, in Puerto Rico you have the, the African, the Spanish, and the Taino, the, the Native American Indian. Um, that's really what you see in most of the island. Caribbean, you, you know, you had the, the, the slaves and whoever was there and whoever was bringing the slaves there, you know? So, uh, whether it was the French or the, or the Spanish. Mm -hmm. um, and so what happens is that in some cultures, for example here, the, the, the slaves were allowed to keep, uh, weren't allowed to keep their instruments and their religions. They weren't allowed to practice those things. So they would, all this stuff was taken away from them. So you end up with jazz, right? You end up with them trying to find a way to kind of express themselves and have their own thing. In the Caribbean, these slaves were allowed to keep their their instruments. They had to hide the way that they were practicing their religions in under the disguise of you know Catholicism and and, and, and that stuff. But they were still kind of practicing in secret. And, um, and so it was still very rich and connected. You know? So when, when, when you get the combination, the, they immediately recognize each other and they realize that they're you know, we're kind of doing the same thing here. You know, it's the same thing, it's just you, you call it jazz and we call it, you know, what we call it. A thousand different things they call it. Cubans have a lot of different rhythms and things. So, so they immediately bonded and they wanted to, you know, Chano Bolso and Dizzy Gillespie and all that stuff. They, they, right away they want to, because musicians are, I, I think musicians are way more um, advanced in terms of you know, development and, and wanting to explore and to try and um, mix genres and create new things. Mm -hmm. um, they don't care where you come from, you know, they, they, they kind of just want to uh, share right? uh, musical stuff. So. Um, so it was already, you know, it was already kind of accepted musically and then regurgitated to the public as something exotic and, and uh, you know, the, the, the I Love Lucy show and, um, and uh, Ricky Ricardo singing the, the mambos and stuff like that. And it, it was this exotic thing and for the, the you know, the, the, the Caucasian people here, it was like this forbidden, you know, like, you know, and it was like, that, that was, uh -huh. um, you know, s s something hot and kind of like exotic. All the drums and all that stuff that they could get into and, and enjoy, and they, they loved that stuff. Anything that was out of the out of the ordinary, they, especially stuff that was exotic. You know? So they, you know, it, it was the way it came in very kind of sneaky. Once you get into the 70s and, and now, it's like we want to be heard and our voices want to be heard mm -hmm. and we're just talking about the, yeah. the civil rights movement and all this stuff is now changing. There's this whole cultural paradigm is shifting. Um, you know, it's different in the sense that now, that now New York has, has had it for long enough that it's starting to read its own um, outlook in terms of music and musicians, you know, what the musicians have at this point after playing with Arsenio Rodriguez who came from Cuba here and playing with Machito and playing with these guys for a long time and then being from here and and being urban and being uh, part of the grid and being influenced and exposed to the popular stuff at the time here it starts to become, starts to take a life of its own. New York is very powerful, you know, it, it, something comes here and immediately it's like, it uh, becomes another thing. And so once that gains momentum in the, in, I mean, that even happened in the 50s because the, the Palladium is, is really that. The Palladium has nothing to do with Cuba. I mean, you know, it, it, in terms of, uh, in terms of the dance and um, how it was being, uh, influenced, it was it was its own thing, you know, it, it developed in a very specific way, um, 
we had Lindy here, and we had the Jitterbug, and we had, you know, the, the tap dancing, and the Nicholas Brothers, and, you know, there were so many things here that people could draw from to express themselves when they were listening to this music. Uh, and when it came to Mambo and Cha Cha Cha, it was, um, it was a free-for-all of Lindy moves and jazz moves. And, and then the Latin hustle, you know, like the, the, the whole Latin disco thing, Latin jazz. Mm -hmm. um, right afterwards in the 70s, um, you know, it's funny, but in, in both hip-hop and in Latin music, the dancers, um, the people that ended up, you know, taking the reins of, of certain things were the Puerto Ricans. In, in, in hip-hop, the people that were doing the music were, were African-American. They were blacks, but the dancers were all Puerto Rican. The, the, the b-boys were mostly Puerto Rican. There was a few um, blacks in there, but the main guys, you know, they were all, um, they were all Puerto Rican. Uh, it was, um, you know, that was the young Puerto Ricans at the time in the late 70s and early 80s. They, you know, that's what they were doing. They were, they were going their own direction. The Latin hustle was Puerto Ricans, you know, that were taking what they saw in the mambo and applying it to the disco music that was starting to become very popular at that time. And then the, the mambo dancers were seeing the turns that they were doing and they were like, let me, let me do because there was a lot of open work yeah. uh, back then. There weren't a lot of terms, but the disco, the idea, the, you know, all this stuff that you could do, and they went on. So, so one influenced the other, and influenced back to it. And, um, a lot of cross fertilization, but I think that uh, in a pop, in a in a broad sense, um, it was it was the Jews and the whites here that got fell in love with it first, and then once you get to the Immigration, it was like, you know, it was, it was okay as part of, you know, we were already digging that stuff. Well, um, yeah, it becomes, it becomes quickly kind of like, you know, this is a melting pot, these people are here, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, it's part of what is New York. You know?